today I'm going to reiterate a question that got Vadim and I started on this path about a year ago and see what his answer is today. So Vadim, do you want to make $10,000 a month? <laughs> I do. I do, Greg. I still do. So this is, uh, this looks like, and it is um, a clickbait title for a podcast, but um, seriously, this was the question that I found online about a year ago, about a year ago, even before, this was just before I got let go from my corporate job. And when I saw that question and I thought to myself, man, $10,000 a month, pretty sweet. And online kind of sort of feels like you don't have to do anything, or at least you have to do something in the beginning and then you just coast making $10,000 a month. And I went down this rabbit hole of watching videos of, uh, there was this one girl and then this was one guy and then there was a hippie looking pot smoking gentleman in another video. And they were all talking about the same thing about like, let's set up a system and this works and you only have to do this once and then it's autopilot. And I bought it. I really, really bought it because it, it kind of made, made sense to me. People were educating others. They were selling their knowledge, but they were selling their knowledge at scale because they could create a video or an explanation course, and then they just launch it into this black box of the internet and money just rolls in. And so I thought to myself, remember, I was working at that time. So I thought to myself, man, if only I had the time to develop all of this. I need help. And then I thought to myself, I know a guy who used to develop uh, educational stuff for a living, like literally for a living. And that was the person who's sitting across from me. Well, not literally across from me, but on the other side of the camera, Greg, he used to, he used to be in charge of all of training for a massive company that uh, had business on two continents, four different countries. So I called up Greg, say, Hey, buddy, what are you doing? And Greg's like, who the hell is this? Wow, why are you calling me? Now, that wasn't, that wasn't the case. Greg and I actually spent a lot of time uh, working together and playing ping pong as well. So, long and behold, a week later, I called up Greg and said, hey, how are you doing? Remember that thing I told you last week about making $10,000 a month? Well, I think I'm going to try it. Oh, that's great, said Greg. Yeah, because I got fired. Anyway, that and I remember I said, "See, you put you put out into the universe that if only I had more time." And all of a sudden, <laughs> you had lots of time on your hands. I I do not I did not appreciate the sarcasm in those words at that time. I'll be honest. It, uh, stung pretty badly. Having said that, um, it was I think you're missing one key point. If I can interrupt, yeah. one is that yeah. not only did you buy into the can you make ten thousand dollars a month, but you also sold it to me as a great idea. And, and uh, so I've jumped right in as well. Yeah, that's, that's true. And in fact, um, although it is clickbait and although um, as we found out over the year, we're gonna, that's what we're going to cover today is our journey of, um, of a pot, not even a podcast, a video cast of what we've been recording. And I'll let Greg recap because he does a more eloquent job of it. Um, this is kind of a summary of, the last year and what it means to be a digital entrepreneur and uh, kind of the th things we tried and where we failed. And unfortunately, it hasn't been, well, you know what, I'm not going to qualify. It's not fortunate. It's not unfortunate. It's been about what, 11 months? No, just shy of 11 months now. We haven't made $10,000, neither Greg nor I. Although I have to Odo. say, he's <laughs> damn close getting there yeah exactly exactly so um do i want to make ten thousand dollars online i still do have i figured it out i i tried i tried i i really really did and i know what works and what doesn't and i know that some of the videos that are out there online saying that you can do this are not necessarily false but they're not as easy as they uh sound and that took time to realize, and uh, that took time to understand. So the journey of a digital entrepreneur was rocky. 
but it was a lot of fun. So Greg, why don't you tell us how we got onto this um, thing about entrepreneur and entre uh, entrepreneur versus, versus entrepreneur. entrepreneur? Sure. Well, I mean, we, we started, like you said, around November of last year. It's funny. I, I think back and I remember like, I don't know if it was November, early December, like we were both ordering equipment on Amazon and stuff. And then because of the holiday shopping, it was like stuff wasn't coming in quickly and <laughs> there was delays and I just got to get my camera. I got to get my computer. I got to get my light. Yeah. Get the lightings. Exactly. And then, uh, you know, I, I had a mad rush because I, I was convinced that if only I got my leadership for teens course out there and, and could pre-sell it as a Christmas present that all the moms and dads and grandpa and grandmas out there, why wouldn't they buy their kid, their teenage kid, a leadership course for Christmas? Um, and I went to bed every night thinking, all right, tonight's the night. I'm going to wake up in the morning and my email is going to be blown up. <laughs> Orders galore. I think I sold eight or 10, something like that. Mostly family and friends and people who knew me, stuff like that. Anyway. Um, but then, of course, because I'd sold it and take, took people's money, I had a, a launch date of February 2nd, I think it was. And I had to build the thing. So then it was a, a rush to get that built and oh, other things I wanted right. to build. That's right. And then, uh, I don't know, we got into... I guess end of February and you know, we were both talking about building content and creating content. And then you came up with a brilliant idea that while well, we're having these morning meetings every day, let's record them and put them together and, and publish them on YouTube and, um, and stuff. And thus entrepreneur versus entrepreneur was born. Yeah. So without fail, uh, even before we started recording those without fail, every, every day at 9.00 AM, barring weekends and maybe some vacations uh, Greg and I sat down and just talked about this and we had a lot to talk about because we were going through this experience together but in our own different ways we chose different platforms uh, we found out new tools and this was it was such a mad rush to like Greg do you know that you can do this yeah. oh my god you can do this promotion with just this tool and it's going to be an avalanche of people wanting to buy your fill in the blank yeah. and then greg would say oh yeah and then i tried camtasia and this is what i built look i'm doing ads with my cartoon characters like wow so we were learning as we were going through this and uh what seemed completely um unknown there's no way to understand it there was no way to comprehend it eventually trial and error uh, kind of brought it into the light of day. And it was great that we started recording our entrepreneur versus entrepreneur because it caught some amazing highlights of our time. Well, he, here's, here's one thing. Here's one thing. In, in, I think it was either late Feb or very early March. It was Monday. I do believe it was Monday. Mm. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was yeah. Monday. And not only was it Monday, it was already our 50th episode, right? Yeah. Well, this is this was in March. This was in uh May. No, uh, this June, I think. May May it was May. It was May. Yeah, it was the Monday of May, May 5th yes. or something like that. Nope, it was not Monday of May. No. It was March. You know why I know this? Because in May, oh right, sorry. Sorry, you're talking. Sorry, guys. Let's pause this. 50th episode was the birth of a different idea. Yeah. Way before that 50th episode, right in the very beginning, on Monday, Greg and I get on a call and we start talking about things. And, um, and that, then, that, this was in March. Yes. This was in March. And then Greg says, oh, I got to tell you, Vadim, I'm all in on this. And I was like, holy shit, what does that mean? We kind of are already all in. Neither of us are working and we're building courses right, left, and center. And he's like, you know what? Go, Greg. Yeah. Just I'm tell like, him what you've done. I said, I signed up for a course over the weekend. I, I, I don't remember if it was five grand or something like that, $3,500, uh, you know, big, big chunk of money that I don't have, but I just so feel so right about what's going on. I'm all in. I'm taking this course. And then and I, lis I listened to him and I was just like, son of a gun. Well, I will not be outdone because I had news of my own without talking about this. With there's, there was no communication. Uh, 
but I also signed up for a course. I paid like nine grand or something, so something, something outrageous. Yeah. Definitely money I could not afford. Yeah. But it felt right. And I was just like, Greg, you know what? I signed up for a course. And that's um, and that's how we kind of invested in our future. Uh, Greg went the path of uh, understanding what coaching is all about. And I tried to go down the path of how to launch and market a digital product. The beauty of the situation was, is that we could share our experiences and help each other out. I, I took this course. It, it was good. It was, it was a very, very good course. It had a very strict timeline of what you're supposed to do and what you're, uh, I launched a beta. I, I launched a product. Essentially, I had a beta group of testers, and then I went through the sales cycle and I learned how the autoresponders work. Everything that is almost second nature right now. Facebook ads. Yeah, Facebook ads. Oh my God, that was fighting Facebook. Getting your, <laughs> getting your credit getting card ads. frozen because of the uh, them dinging you for two bucks or something every five minutes. <laughs> yeah, my cards. Yeah, my cards getting locked up. Yeah. And then, and then, and yeah, that, that was an exciting period of time. So my, in my, in my case, I, although I did have a good focus group, I had a good beta testing group. Uh, I did not sell a single course. Having said that I built the whole course. I, I, I mean, I, I had the f- full marketing platform, website, landing page, five uh, email sequence, all of that done. None of it. I knew how to do just a couple of months ago. Yeah. And Greg was going on and on about how, like the, the just the coaching experience. Uh, actually, you know what? Why am I telling you the story? What did you get out of your coaching? Uh, yeah, well, my, my course was called Thriving Coaches Blueprint. It's about how to become a thriving coach, talked about how to attract clients, how, how to... Uh, sign clients up on package programs instead of individual sessions. Um, But beyond that, it was learning about a whole new kind of paradigm of how the world works. And I don't know, it's, it's, we got to do peer coaching. And and I can literally say like, I'm like, my life is completely different because of that course. And I've I've actually signed up for a subsequent course that starts in January, which is another huge chunk of change. Um, although one of the selling features of that course, which, and this is part of the learning process too, is as we buy things, we're learning from what, what's attracting us to buy them too. Right. So with this course I'm on the, one of the attractions of buying the upgraded course was that they subtract the price you already paid for the other, the feeder course from the, the total. So, you know, it's, uh, it's and another upsell kind of, I have to say, employee. note the terminology an upsell a downsell, a feeder course, main course. Um, it, it's, it's interesting that we use those terms quite fluently right now. Yeah. I, had no never idea, heard of them. <laughs> I had no idea what an upsell is, what a bump is, what is a downsell? No idea. And yet now Greg and I, we, we I mean, in our endeavors, we even set up uh, partnerships and affiliate links and all of that, yeah. all of those things that we have had never had a clue about. But let me get back to, let me get back to, so this journey continued uh, and uh, obviously there were highs, there were lows and there were those inflection points, if you will. So the 50th episode of Entrepreneur versus Entrepreneur, which is still available on YouTube, go to my channel, go to Greg's channel, you'll be able to catch them. Yes, it is a shameless plug. Um, Greg had an idea. He said, you know what? I was in the shower. How about I, oh, actually, I'm going to shut up now. Greg, tell the story. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd uh, been working with Miguel Hernandez, Hernandez? Yep. Hernandez, Hernandez, uh, who introduced us to Glide, which is a no-code app building product. So, um, you know, toyed around and been thinking kind of in the back of my head, like just, you know, you put uh, thought back there and just let it cook for a while. And then, you know, where do you have most of your good ideas? Well, it's when you're in the shower or out for a walk or you're not thinking. And, and all of a sudden this idea came to me about, Hey, I could use this app to build something um, for kids when mm-hmm. the parents are away. And uh, 
That's uh, that's a blatant lie. It started well, it was, with your dad. Well, I did. I built an app for my dad. Hit the yeah. art. The art app, which was a which was a shameless steal of Miguel's app that he built for his mother to record poetry. Um, so she wrote a lot of poetry, and he recorded audios of her reading the poetry, but then other family members reading her poetry as well. Right. And then I built this app for my dad. But then it was like, how do you how do you monetize or commercialize this into something? legitimate and then my my sister-in-law is a a mommy blogger for called uh, her program's called pregnant chicken and i thought how you know there's an, a warm audience how can we tap into that what what would this look like and that's when i came up with the idea of doing a, at first to start off it was going to be a pregnant chicken app where it was going to be like recording audios for kids books and uh what would that look like and i happened to be out over there on the weekend and I ran a buyer and she thought it was a good idea. So then of course, Monday morning rolls around and I, well, I, I, I'd come home from telling her about the idea on Saturday, I think to Saturday night and Sunday to building a prototype of the app on Sunday to then showing it to Vadim on Monday morning and talking about it. Next thing you know, we were launching into a, a, pro, a, a our first partnership. And the first, and the first digital um, slash physical product. Yeah. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. I thought to myself, man, that's fantastic. And we've, we've, we started this, this was beginning of May, and we've dedicated the whole month of May to building, refining, solving. I mean, come on, we were solving permission issues for an app. Yeah, yeah. we had uh, six, six beta testers, I think we had. We did, yes. Who, who uh, you know all thought it was the, a great idea, and they were all our target market, young children. Um, my son loved listening to the books recorded by me or my wife. Um, so it all I, gave us, it gave us that amazing drive feeling that we're doing something meaningful. And it helped that we had uh, what we thought is a pretty significant warm audience to deliver this to. Yeah. Cause, cause even though we believed in what we've been doing to that point, we had no audience and we thought this is finally, this is what we, the piece that's been missing for us is the warm audience. And we can, we can, you know, dovetail into this nicely. And uh, we're going to go to bed one morning and wake up the next morning. I don't know, millionaires. <laughs> yeah. We, we talked a lot about pricing or should it be $5.99? Should it be $9.99? Should we go $20.99? Do we do a recurring model? Do we do it a monthly, maybe an annual fee? We thought about so many different things. We've, we've covered the basis with this. So we built an app. It's still alive and it's well, and you can check it out on either solobusiness.ca uh, backslash story time. That's the sales page for the app. And everything we, we've, we got, we figured out how to connect disparate systems, how to collect and pre-populate registration fields. We did all that. And then came the 14th of June. And I remember this right now, 14th of June, we set a timeline of where we're launching and we delivered. We were ready to launch on the 14th of June. Yeah. And we, we, we incorporated Trello to keep ourselves on track, um, had everything lined up. I don't know. It was it was pretty amazing in a, it going from an idea to fully launch not not just the app but we had all the the web page built we had training videos done I got my daughter to do voiceovers for it yeah that's right we did I did like video commercial videos um we had Instagram posts all kinds of like a whole program in like six weeks from from, from zero to launching yeah so we've done all of that and on 14th of june the email went out to the audience of pregnant chicken and we registered our first sale and we were online live with each other while you had the analytics open and we're like oh my god it's happening yes <laughs> and, we, and we saw and yes we had analytics going we could see when people landed on the on the um, sales page we could see when they went to the website we can see when they downloaded the app yeah and we had the first sale. And unfortunately, that was the only sale. Yeah. Um, I think we had maybe 
two more sales past that, but um, yeah. Well, we had a, our, our beta testers who got it for beta testing, and then um, like my brother, I, I basically had to twist his arm <laughs> <laughs> to buy it, and I didn't give him the pro promo code, so he paid full price. Yeah. Um, so there's been a few things like that, but uh, yeah, we also had promo codes. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I took it very hard. I mean, I'll be honest. That was one of the that was one of the things that. Um, um, it's not that it made me lose faith in the whole thing, but that was that was the project that when it did not work out, I could not believe that it's not that we failed because we definitely succeeded in what we've delivered. Yeah. We just probably didn't deliver the product that people wanted to buy. Yeah. Well, it's and like opening just, in a store and you cut the ribbon and, no and one nobody comes. <laughs> so, so, and after that, after that, uh, it took, for me, it took at least a month to get back to uh, kind of in the space of trying, doing something. Uh, Greg, continue, you, you continued on. Like, I mean, you chugged along with uh, many other projects and you still like pushed story time as much as you could. I, I, re I definitely remember that. Yeah. Um, but the one thing is, I then I made out. more. I made more commercials with the stock footage, yeah. The the use cases that we had, yeah. And um, we bounced back, and uh, it's interesting. You bounced back to a completely new thing. So I launched uh, buy sell uh, business in Canada, which is a completely odd website. And Greg went on to launch uh, coaching things, yeah. which. Uh, it's interesting because as we as we as we, as we think of wrapping wrapping up entrepreneur versus entrepreneur, and this is kind of the final chord of it. Um, we've tried so many different types of businesses. Between two of us, I can't even count them on a single hand. That was yeah. that's how many. Um, and you are actually going to be making money not from coaching. <laughs> but from app development. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've got some coaching money. I've got some app development. I've got leadership courses. Um, you have training, a lot of, yeah, training you have a lot of lines in the, in, in the water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to eat lots of little fish is kind of the, the approach. Okay. So, Greg, what's, uh, how would you summarize entrepreneur versus entrepreneur? Um, probably the most fun I've had in a year, in my whole career, it's probably been the most fun. Yeah. And for, and for me, it's definitely has been the closest relationship without actually seeing the person because in the span of this 11 month, Greg and I have seen each other live once. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We, we finally went up when uh, restrictions got lifted. We met up for lunch. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> yes. So with that, do you want to make ten thousand dollars a month? Of course, we all do. Um, it takes a lot more work than anyone would let you believe. So, can you do it? Of course, you can. Just give yourself a lot of runway. And if you think that you're going to make ten thousand dollars a month, at least that's for me. That's that's what I take away. If you think that three months is going to be enough, it's not. If you think half a year is going to be enough, not likely. But can you? Of course you can. Well, it's 2022. I'm feeling good about it. So and you should. I'm, I'm aiming high. I'm going to make 10,000 in one a month. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So with that, that was a short uh, recap and then... And a well-deserved ending to our project, which is entrepreneur versus entrepreneur. But we decided that it would be a great idea to share with you how you feel as you go through something like this. And that, although our podcast would, has a different name, is definitely not that simple. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, the only, the only thing I'd end on is that, uh, you know, financially, we didn't have the success that we wanted. But I, I'd say in every other respect... Oh yeah, it was very successful. We 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 blew it out of the water. Yeah. So high five, my good man. High five. All right. And we'll see you. Come on. 
Yeah, and we'll see you next episode. Oh, it's simple, really. See you next time. <laughs>